Before you scroll down or ruin the review or skip or do anything or listen to anything I have to say, I highly recommend that you look up this album, that you listen to it, and then come back. Season Sun 4, Music for People in Trouble, review. This album was recommended to me by a friend of mine who also does music reviews. I'll leave the uh, link in the description. But getting into this album, gosh, this, this thing is amazing. Not everyone's going to like it the same way I do, but I really enjoyed this thing. This is an album that fuses a lot of jazz pop and a lot of spacious singing and instrumentation, and there's experimental. And one of the important points to make is the fact that this album, as I was listening to it, heavily reminded me of Swan's The Seer, which is also an album that I think is spectacular. The reason I make that comparison involves a lot of the droney noises as well as the obscure experimentation and the vocals that were sung by the female that reminded me of uh, two of the tracks on here. I can't think of a single note that was sung poorly throughout this entire thing. Every single note was on key and it was so melodic and beautiful. But another thing about this album was the experimentation. And it definitely worked in this album, not just because it was experimental and it's hard to say that, oh yeah, you know, give them a pass. No, it sounded really good. Another thing to note about this album is the pacing. Uh, this is a slow album, just with the sound and everything being so spacious, but it never feels like it drags on. I can't think of a single point of where I was like, okay, this song is going on too long, even on the eight minute track. The Sound of War. I have so much to say about this. It's it's spectacular. It starts off with running water and it's relaxing and it's just, it's like the calm after the storm from the uh, song before it, which kind of had this uh, obscure jazz going on uh, that was kind of this room filling, sort of experimental, but absolutely beautiful piece. And then the guitar comes in. Um, the guitar on this project, every single like chord, everything that the piano was involved in and the guitar and the flute they were so beautiful and it was so well executed it blew my mind I listened to this thing like five times in the last day and it just every single time felt like it was the first time listening to this thing vocals on this track just everything about this track was so good there's lengthy drone and then there's like a second half is kind of like a separate song on this eight minute track. It's got this very fat synthesizer that drags it out and then it's got a bass that's uh, this like bass tuba that really just punctures through everything. It is just so strong and just really carries out the track. This is an amazing song. There really is not a dull moment on this album. Everything from the start of this thing to the end, mantra being the start, it just was like subtle guitar. The beginning was a little shaky but even then, it's, it's just getting adjusted. And once you get adjusted, everything just feels so amazing. It's spacious, but not lazy. And another thing to note about this album, the lyrics on here are just beautiful. It's really nice to see some sort of intricacy within the lyrics themselves, because it feels like a puzzle. You just dig deeper and kind of say, okay, this is what she's saying. Okay, this song's about love. This song's about kind of being crushed from it and not having faith in it anymore. Good Luck, Bad Luck was a song that when it started off, I was like, I, I wasn't really sure what the direction that it was going. There's a piano ballad throughout this thing and the piano is beautiful. And it does dip into some experimental parts near the end. And I just know when the vocals stop, the last word cup is said, like like the instrumentation just completely cuts off and it just, it, it like instantly builds tension. And right after that, there's the jazz piece, which is so good. Like this sounds just like behind an alley kind of stuff that like Swans reminded me of on something like uh, 97 Avenue Blues. After these songs that kind of start off the album, it then goes to the song uh, Music for People in Trouble, which is the title track. And this is a very odd left hook. This song is like nothing else. It's extremely experimental. It starts off with these glitchy, strange noises that are just hard to decipher. It just feels like like just bubbly, strange, glitchy noises. And it's all spoken word on here. And uh, the spoken word seems to be about 
a sort of questioning life itself and saying, you know, well, maybe we're just riding the wave, riding the wave of life and how we're like a ring and life just goes right through us. And I really like this song. It's it's so cool with all these different noises that are thrown in. Even though this entire song is just completely different from everything else, it doesn't feel like it's out of place because of just the attention that is built through a lot of the songs on this album. And after this song, it sort of slows back down with Bedtime Story, which again, with a lot of these songs, it feels like they take a little while to get adjusted to, but they're so well made that you just sort of fall into them, you fall into the noise. And with Bedtime Story, there's more beautiful singing, more everything. And the one thing I was thinking when listening to this song is, this is kind of what Lana Del Rey wants to be, but is not. Like, I think that Lana Del Rey has good vocals, but man, the fact that she uses all this garbage trap instrumental crap is just really sad for the sound that she's really trying to portray. But this, with the jazz pop. After that, you go to Undercover, which, man, oh my gosh. This this is a song that's very poppy. It's got this, this very pop sort of feel to it. Man, this singing on this whole album. What else can I even say? What else can I even say? No One Believes in Love Anymore, I think was probably, at first, I thought this was going to be the worst track uh, because it's like, it, this song felt a little repetitive. It's got a dark piano going for it, as well as a couple of other things, but it's just like, okay, you know, eh, they could have done more with the instrumentation early on, but the second half, the second half, this thing really picks it back up. It really kind of builds its form around the second half. The Golden Age, another song that was just amazing. The beat in this thing, every time it went up to that high pitch, da -da, kind of throughout the beat and the all the experimentation that came back into this track and the the, the horn section is just kind of going back and forth just like boom boom and like waves or bumps this this felt creative this felt very creative and it did such a good job the vocals again carry this thing and it felt very dramatic and then we get to the last song mountaineers i swear to god i thought i was crazy comparing this album to swans and then I heard this song. This literally sounds like a song off of the Glowing Man. Okay, this sounds like a Glowing Man track in its own amazing way because it starts off with a vocalist, uh, John Grant, who does indeed sound like Michael Giro. Okay, that's kind of, it's, it's very clear the comparison there. This is how you end an album. The droning male vocals and then the female vocals come in and then they just sort of layer on top of each other and then they just sort of push through and the whole thing just comes together in such a spectacular, just, just swirling storm. This song is a masterpiece, just with the ending just building up so much. Just so much noise, so much going on with the vocals just never, never losing the punch throughout this entire thing. That's, that's basically everything, but this is not a genre that I usually would ever consider listening to but I'm so glad I did listen to this. Even though it's experimental in a lot of pieces, it does maintain its structure. And I have to say that so far of 2017 specifically, this has been the best album of the year for me. So let's get into scoring because I'm really excited to give this thing a score. Uh, first of all, I only gave this in one category because I felt like there really was no reason to give this thing any other categories but enjoyment. And I really feel like that's the only category that really matters in this sort of album. Because yes, the sound also amazing. I, I mean, everything that I could say about this album, I would give extremely high scores. But at the end of the day, my enjoyment was really the only thing that mattered, which I did give a 9.5. I listened to this thing five times in the last 24 hours, and every time it felt like I was listening to it for the first time. There was very little in this album that I did not enjoy and it really is a perfection of sound, personally, I feel. And I'd say final score is a 9.5. This, this was spectacular. This is an extremely close album to getting a 10 for me. The only thing that held it back was a couple of places that just felt like they could have had more, or that they were like, like, but they were so small. There really was almost not a single track that I could even put in the worst songs. 
because there really was not a worse track on this thing. It was 48 minutes, but it just never dragged on. It never felt boring, and it reminded me a lot of that thing, which I absolutely love. Overall, I highly recommend this. I am absolutely going to come back to this album, and I really want to know what other people think of this, because I seriously think that this could be the best album for this year. Anyways, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, uh, make sure to leave a like. Um, Leave a comment if you want to, you know, tell me maybe something to review, uh, you want to give me some feedback. Uh, make sure you subscribe, make sure you uh, say hello, and uh, yeah, goodbye.